starting um, 16a on the bottom, the very bottom line of the Mishnah. The Mishnah. On the Kabbalt saying Barzal Menovit Kechavim. Okay, here what's happening is Tain Barzal is an expression that's used. It doesn't actually have to be sheep that this is that this is being given. It's an expression because uh, th there was a, a, a way that the, that people would take um, animals. They would uh, one person would own the animals. The other person would receive them, would take them from him and work with them, and after a certain amount of years, would give him back the. It would be like he would manage these animals and give him back the products, the offspring, and he would. They would divide the offspring in half. Okay, now the the uh, the significance here is that Saint Barzel needs to be given back with the original value, and if the original value is if it's depreciated at all, you have to go back and and uh, and make that and compensate for that. So it's really like so a loan. So the sheep uh, at the time was a hundred dollars, and now it's only fifty dollars. The same sheep. Yeah. So uh, I'm not that. sure if the if it's the market rate, I don't know if it applies to the market rate. Now, if this sheep that he gave you is only worth 50, uh -huh. you have to go back and replace that original. That's 50. So, really, what you're doing is you're taking a loan. Isn't Sam Barzil a term mainly used by a, a woman who yeah. brings her yeah. assets? It's used it's a, as opposed to Nechse Malug. Nechse Malug is when she would bring in I think, things that the husband's allowed to use, but if it gets worth any less, she just takes it back and the husband's not responsible. Sam Barzil is he has to replace its original value. So the problem is, is that it's really like a loan because when you borrow $100, you have to give back $100. Uh, if when you borrow an item, it could get worth less a little bit through regular usage and you're still giving it back. And or, or let's say you're renting it. Here he's like renting because he's paying for it. But it's it's really a loan that's going back. So there's gonna you're gonna see that there's an issue with doing this with the Jew. Okay, but a person accepts sheep from a non-Jew, and he's going to give back half of the pro, the the offspring. So blood they say I have the original sheep. I have the offspring of the sheep. When we say exempt peturin, we say they're exempt from giving their offspring as a Bechar to the Kayan. Why? Because the non-Jew that gave him the original sheep wants those original sheep back. Let's say those original sheep, for whatever reason, didn't have the right value, he would go to the offspring to take them. What's the rule if a non-Jew owns a sheep? You don't have to, it's part of from Bechar. Because the Pasuk says, Be Yisrael. Kilika Bechar Be Yisrael. Only a Jewish sheep. So here, even the third generation doesn't go back to the, doesn't go to the, in other words, you have the sheep themselves, the offspring which the non-Jew still has his hand in, that's the mother sheep. That mother sheep doesn't need to give the, the uh, child to the, the mother sheep is the one that's giving it, uh, but the owner doesn't need to give the child of that mother sheep to the kind. However, vladi vladi sem chayavin. The fourth generation does have to go back to the Kayan if it's the firstborn. Hemed Vladi Sein Tachsim is saying, let's say he actually expressed that not only the original sheep, but he expressed that the Kayan, that the non-Jew can, can take from the offspring as well if the original sheep don't have the right value. Then what happens is it goes down next year generation and vladi vladi spturin vladi 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 schayavin. It goes down to the fifth generation. <coughs> There's a bunch of, uh, of sheep here that aren't going to be responsible. That aren't, you don't have to t do bechar. So the first ones, that's that was actually belongs to the kayan. The second one, the second generation, is the kayan has his hands in it to take from it. And now, if you actually express that the kind can take from that, then it goes even one more generation, and that's also exempt, and only the, the children of the next generation will be responsible. Rav Shimon ben Gamliel, Aymer, Afilu Adasara, you have to add in the Bach, Afilu Adasara, Daris Peturin. Why? I'm a little confused. It's not as simple as just the 
the grandchild of the original sheep belongs totally to the Jew. Grandchild of the, yeah, that's what it means. The grandchild of the original sheep belongs to, to the Jew. So Only if he didn't say that the non-Jew can take from the children as well. No. If he said they can take from the children, then it's the great-grandchild that belongs to For the For some children. reason, he's changed the deal. Yeah. Well, okay. he's given the, the non-Jew more a hand more, a hand right, more in right, the right, offspring okay. than he originally had. Again, it's obvious that when the offspring get divided, half of them go to the non-Jew, half to stick with the Jew. That we're talking about the half that stuck with the Jew. And he, nevertheless, he's still exempt. The ones that belong to the non-Jew, of course he's exempt from Bukhar because it's not a Jewish, it's not Jewish owned. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel says that you have ten generations and that's an expression that means forever. Until this deal is done and they're given back, everything's given back, the, um, the, he's totally exempt from, from giving the Bukhar. Because all of them, all of the offsprings, will end up going to the non-Jew if, for whatever reason, there's a loss of the original ones. Okay, now we have another case in the Mishnah. Rachel Shield and Menez. The Chachamim say, yeah, the Tanakama. They don't say that it's all of those generations. That's like a far-fetched thing that all of them should get lost, and and then the guy is going to come and take that. All right, maybe the Gemara. No, the Gemara is going to say that possibly Reb Shimon Ben Gamliel is only talking about Hamid when the Jew added that stipulation that, the, that, that, uh, that he gave the guy the extra power to take from the children then it goes to a fifth generation Reb Shimon Ben Gamliel says no, then it goes forever but maybe he never, even Reb Shimon Ben Gamliel didn't say that at the beginning that's going to be a discussion in the Gemara <coughs> a sheep that gave birth to a goat So we learned before that we had this Mishnah quoted earlier that it's exempt from Bukhar, even though a goat is Chayev. If it would have been a goat that gave birth to a goat, it would have been Chayev. Both the animals are Chayev and Bukhar. But over here, the, it has to be Hu Bukhar or Bukhar Rishar, Hu Shar or Bukhar Rishar, it has to be similar to the mother. The Eishi Yeldim in Rachel, the same, the opposite, it was a goat that gave birth to a sheep. It's exempt. The Mishpi makes a Simanim Chayev. But if it has some signs that are similar, then it's obligated. Okay, we're up to the Gemara. Uh, 16b. Is the Gemara is going to... Okay. The Gemara is going to discuss... No, to show. For oh, it's the audio visual, visual. Oh, it's on this Gemara? Okay. <laughs> oh. Coffee, coffee. You've got to step up this uh -huh. class. Uh -huh. the competition. Okay. So the Gemara mentioned the, the, the Mishnah that was discussing Saint Barzel. That's the sheep that are given in the way that need to be um, given back with their original value. So the Gemara says, Lameimra, the Kivan to Nakat Marazuze, since the original owner did not take money for these for these animals yet, who do they belong to? Marakaima, they still belong to the non Jew. Why is he exempt from Bukhar? Because these animals belong to the non-Jew. Why do they belong to the non-Jew? Because the non-Jew has never paid for them yet. Hasn't paid for them. But there's a contradiction. The Gemara throws us back into Bab Metziah. Once, once the, the, the guy gets his share and the yeah, partnership is dissolved, then, then it's, it's done. Yeah, we're, we're talking about the 10 years that he mm -hmm. takes it for. Let's say it's 10 years. Um, all during that time, if there's, the guy has the rights to something, However, we have a contradiction here because the, the, the Mishnah, it's a Mishnah in Bab Metzia, says, Ein Makabam Barsam Yisrael, Neshu Ribas. It's interest. Because what happens here? The Jew gets the sheep. There's no, there's no rich interest on an item. If I borrow, if I borrow something, uh, a pencil or something, I, it's not like I'm, now I can't give you anything. I'm giving back the pencil. There's interest on money. If I borrow money and I have to give back that money, I can't give anything extra. Okay. So here, 
because Tzayin Barzel is the original value, it's, it becomes not the item that needs to be returned. The item needs to be returned, but if the item, there's any depreciation in the item, then you have to replace it. So it's really like a loan. Then what happens after the, you give back those animals, the original animals, then you have to give half the offspring also. So half the offspring is clearly interest. <coughs> so you're not allowed to do, do this type of business with another Jew. Now what does that mean? Alma, that means Bishusa de Makabal Kaima. See, a loan, the money is not the original owners. The money is now the one that is the bar becomes the borrower's money. He has to replace them, that money. By an item, when you borrow an object, the item is the original owner, so there's no interest on that. But when you take a loan, the money becomes yours. And then you owe money. You owe, it's like you bought something from the store. If you buy something from the store, so the item becomes yours, you, and you owe money, you have to pay for it. So when you borrow money, you, the, money be, the money is yours, totally yours. You just have a, a debt that you have to pay it back. So, but if that's the case, that, that if these sheep become totally yours, then why are you exempt from Bechar? Why are you exempt from Bechar? The, the, the reason why you're exempt from Bechar is because the, the non-Jew owns it. But here we're saying that it's like a loan. And it's like a loan, then the Jew owns it. And then it shouldn't be exempt. Why, if it's a loan, the Jew owns it? Because the loan, all the money is yours. When, when you borrow children? money, no, th those original sheep, those original sheep. If it's like a loan, because you, why is it like a loan? Because you have to give back the value, okay. not the item. So, so therefore, those sheep are really yours, and you have to give. You always have to replace the original so value. Why don't we just ask it straightforward? If somebody borrows. Uh, sheep from another person and at the end of X amount of time he, all he has to do is pay him back the value. Right. That's exactly the case. So you borrow sheep, you don't own the sheep. You borrow sheep, you do own the sheep. Because he only has to pay back the value. If he has to pay back the original value... Are you value, high about Yeah, A hundred percent. You have to if pay back the value. If you're person, you don't own it. Own it. Until you pay, you don't no, own the it. opposite. If you're not chay of Bachrisim, then you don't own it. If you're not chay of Bachrisim, you own it. No, no, no. It's yours. No, no, no. That's, not, not, no, that's not what it means, chay of Bachrisim. Chay of look, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I can throw away my money and I don't have to pay anyone. Right. But I'm fully responsible for that. I lost money. That's what it means. I was chay of I lost that money. Right. So, chay of so Does that demonstrate that it belongs to the other guy? No, 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 because the term Chayav Bachar would mean when I take, if I take my money and I throw it into the sea, I'm totally Chayav Bachar No one's going to pay me for that. I'm, I lost that money. So, that's not I know the expression isn't used like that, but that's the concept. So when it comes to if Eina Chayav Bachar means that I can give it back, I didn't lose any money, the original one lost the money. He was the one that, that, that takes the loss. You, you follow? So when it comes to a loan, when it comes to a loan, I'm 100% responsible. If I borrow money and I lose that money, I can't go to the guy and say, I, I, I lost the money, I'm sorry. That's not how it works. It was 100% mine, and I have a full debt that I have to give. It's a full uh, responsibility. So we have a contradiction here. On the one hand, it's on the hands of the recipient that he owns it, and... And that's why there's interest. On the other hand, on the other hand, we see that he's exempt because it belongs to the original owner. So Amar Abaya Lekasha, Abaya says it's not a problem. We have a way of, we have a way of resolving this. What are we gonna do? Depends. There's a way that we are the original owner. Says that I'm accepting responsibility. If the original owner says, I'm accept accepting responsibility, then it didn't really go into the hands of the recipient of the borrower. And then when he gives it back, it's not going to be considered interest. But that's not, our, that's not our concern of the interest. Our concern is that because the original owner accepted responsibility, so then the original owner is not Jewish. The original owner isn't Jewish, so he's exempt from Bechar. 
Amalei Rava. Rava says to him that you're changing the case. The Kabbalah lines of Azale of Tzayn Barzal Kars like, that's not Tzayn Barzal. Tzayn, that's, that's when you, uh, when you borrow an item and, and the original owner isn't going to charge you for everything you're exempt from minus or whatever, you're exempt from different uh, responsibilities. But if, but Tzayn Barzal doesn't mean that. Tzayn Barzal means that you always need to replace the original value. That's like a regular loan. Void my Pasca. Also, where do you get this thing that there's a Tzayn Barzal like this and there's a Tzayn Barzal like that? Who, who made up this difference in Tzayn Barzal? Void, and the third issue is, Adetani Seifa, instead of the, the Seifa reading, Abba Makabim Tzayn Barzal Menayavit Kechavim, in Bab Metziah. It says you're not allowed to uh, t- make this arrangement with a Jew because it's interest. However, you are allowed to make this arrangement with a non-Jew because you're allowed to give a non-Jew interest. You're allowed to charge him interest. You're allowed to give him interest. Let it divide it and say the two cases with the Jew itself. When do we say that you're not allowed to make this business, business, type of business with the Jew? That's if the Jew didn't accept responsibility. But if the original owner would accept the responsibility, then you would be allowed to make this business transaction. And if that's the case, so when the mission is trying to give you, when the mission is trying to give you a contrast between when it's allowed, when it's not allowed, you don't have to jump from a case of a Jew to a non-Jew. You can say even if it originally belongs to a Jew, there's a case when it's allowed. Elam Rava, Rava says really, Tzayn Barzal is Tzayn Barzal. And it, with a Jew it's interest, and you have no other way of doing it that, to make it not interest. <laughs> However, <laughs> we're always talking about Tzayn Barzal is when there is no acceptance of responsibility from the original owner. Here by Bechor it's different. Hainu time, what's the reason? That if the, if the non-Jew would come and ask for his money, and you didn't give it to him, he would grab the animal. And if he doesn't find the animal, so he would take the animal's offspring. So therefore, because the hand of the, the non-Jew is in this, so it doesn't have to be an exemption from Bukhar only because the non-Jew is the real owner, but even if the non-Jew has the rights to, to retrieve it, to retrieve his original value through it, that also exempts him from first one. Okay. So the kasha was <coughs> that because we know that this case is interest, that means that it belongs to the Jew. And the answer is yes, it is a case of interest, and it does belong to the Jew, but because the non-Jew can retrieve his original money by, by, uh, by taking this, these animals, so it's, it's enough to exempt him from Bukhar. Okay. Hemed vladi seim tachasim seim vladi vladi spatur. If the offspring is given back to the... I'm sorry, can I ask a quick question? Yeah. The right of the, of the non-Jew to grab it, you could say, extrajudicially, is this always there? And if so, why do we have this halakha at all? <coughs> if, it's a if pledge. It, it's a pledge. It must be. I, it. Oh, I, I understand. Security. But if anybody, any non-Jew can come and grab it when he wants. No, only the lender. I understand. That's what we're talking about. When the non-Jew is the lender right. to the Jew, and the Jew doesn't give him back the money. He can come and grab it any time he wants. So why do we have this whole halakha? Why are we worried about everything? He always has the right to take it. It's not really a loan if you can take it back any time you want. Not much of a loan. Of course it's a loan. It's just a <laughs> security. No. I think you yeah, let security. The, at the time, Continue the Gemara just a little further. At the, the time, at the time of re- repayment, if those original animals aren't there, so then the nanja will take from the offspring. Mm-hmm. And so therefore, it's even though those offspring are meant to be divided half and half, half of them should be the Jews. So the Jews should really have full ownership of those of those offspring. So, but, but he, the, the non-Jew can grab it, can the take what can take that. otherwise belonged to the Jew. Yeah, because it wasn't divided yet, and it's 
uh, maybe it is divided, but because even even though it's divided, but the, the, it's still there is some sort of debt that goes back to, to him, which even though it's already owned by the Jew, but that hand that he has is able to is able to exempt it from Bukhar. It needs to be fully without any rights of the of the non-Jew. You're talking about before it was divided or, or after it was divided? Well. The I, I'm not sure if the if it's already divided during this process, but it, it, it's impossible to say that what's clearly the non-Jews is um, uh, has any discussion about if it's. So this is before it was divided. So what happens if you you have a partnership with a guy? It has to be that it's divided already. That's what I'm saying. It has to be that it's divided because then there's no discussion. So okay, Hamid Vladi saying Tachsi Mesein Vladi Vladi Spiturin. This is a mistake in the printer. It's not supposed to be there because we're not really talking about the Hammond right now. We're talking about um, just the original discussion of of the, the vladis, <coughs> the offspring. We said that the that the children don't have to go back to the uh, that ch- the children's children aren't bechar because the non-Jew has a hand in taking them. Am Rav Huna. Rav Huna says. It's going to have to be a machlekas here, Rav Huna and Rav Yehuda. This, these are first generation Amirai. What's the Pshad in the Mishnah? Sorry, not first generation, second generation. Rav Huna and Rav Yehuda. Mm-hmm. These two right here. You brought the tape. Um, Rav Huna, Vladei Spturin, Vladei Vladei Sam Chayavim. Exactly how we learned in the Mishnah. The offspring are exempt from their offs, from the grandchildren going. In other words, the, 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 I have the original animals, I have the children, and then I have the grandchildren. So the children, the, the offspring, are exempt from their grandchildren going back as a Bechar. I'm not going back, going to the Kayan as a Bechar. However, Vladi Vladi Sayyim, but the, the grandchildren's children, those are Chayev. Those will go as a Bechar. The fourth generation goes back. Rabbi Yehuda Amar Vladi Vladi Snami Pturin. Rabbi Yehuda says that the fourth generation doesn't go back either. Vladi 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 Schayavin. It's only the fifth generation that goes to the Kayan. Tanan. says three and four. Yeah, but you have to recognize that three means that the offspring of the third are exempt from Bechar. Is that clear? Is that, the, is that how they explain it? They just say three, third generation. Look, well, you gotta third check. One. There's gotta be some sort of. Uh, th- th- I understand third, and, but third means that when that third mother has a child, that's exempt from that's, that. Uh, that third has a child, so then that child, which is the fourth, goes back, okay. right? Okay. okay. So Tanan, we ask a question here on on Rabbi Yehuda. It says Hamid Vladi Stachsi Masein Vladi Vladi Spiturim. Then the fourth generation is exempt. Time of the Hamid. That's only because the Jew said to the non Jew that you can take from the children. So you added an extra generation. When do you get that extra? When does the non Jew have ownership over the extra generation? If this clearly <coughs> stipulated that, that's a, that he has that extra hand. Halai Hamid, but if he didn't say that, Loi, then it only goes until the, the third generation, which means the fourth generation is the Bechar. Tiefta to Rabbi Yehuda. It's a question on Rabbi Yehuda. Amalach Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda will respond. Who adin afilu afogav delay Hamid? The truth is that even if he doesn't <coughs> stipulate that the that the non-Jew can get that extra generation, it still always gets that generation. So then, why does he have to stipulate it? Hakamash Mulan afilu Hamid nami dorcha de kavim lemitzvah spina b'avik mid delay Hamid vladi vladi turin vladi vladi chayavin. Why do they say the word to you for the Rabbi Yehuda? Why can't you just ask the question like a normal thing? Why do you have to say to the that he answers right back? No, no the, it, yeah, it, the, way, the way I like to read it is, do you have to do Rabbi Yehuda? Is this a question, Rabbi Yehuda? And the Gemara says, I'm Allah Rabbi Yehuda, now Rabbi Yehuda will respond. That's why if it, sometimes it says, Tiyufta de Rabbi Yehuda, de Rabbi Yehuda Tiyufta. So the way you read that is, Tiyufta de Rabbi Yehuda? And the answer is, yes, Tiyufta. So it's, it's put as a question. I don't know if they would put it as a question, but that's yeah. how... Uh, okay. They put it as a statement, but it says apparently. In other words, they're, right. they're getting ready to tell yeah, you no. Right. It's a question. Uh, it's still on. Because my uh, esteemed colleague 
Okay, so what the response here is, is that I have a chiddush. The Rab, what Rabbi Yehuda will answer is that why is it that, it's, that in Hamid, if he stipulates that the non-Jew can take from the offspring, then he goes to the fifth, then only the fifth generation is going to go to the Kayan. Why, 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 apparently Rabbi Yehuda holds that always, even, and, and here we say if he stipulates that the non-Jew can take from the offspring, then it's the, only the fifth generation that goes to the Kayan. The answer is, is that, that it's, the truth is it is always the, only the fifth generation that goes. But I could have thought that if he says, bloody sayem, that the, that the non-Jew can take from the offspring, that even the fifth generation wouldn't go back to the Kayan. I would have thought that then he could take from all the offspring, and then it would never go to the Kayan. The Kamash Malan, that in that case, still the fifth generation goes to the Kayan. But there really is no difference, according to Rabbi Yehuda, if there was a stipulation that the non-Jew can take from the offspring or not. It's always the fifth generation goes back to the Kayan. Goes back, goes to the Kayan. Okay. Tanan, I have another question. Even ten generations are exempt, which means forever he's always exempt. Why? Because he's responsible. To the the responsibility goes back to the. He's responsible to the non-Jew that these that he gets his original money back. So Bishleim or Rabbi Yehuda, if we say according to Rabbi Yehuda, that the Tanakam is giving me a certain amount of generations. Let's try to do this in a way that we can see visualize it. <laughs> I got that chart. Let me take this. Let me take this. One yeah, second. Yeah, that's been handed out to everybody. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so here, let's do it like this. Oh, yeah, thank try, you. I'll try to bring the examples. <laughs> okay, so. Let's do it like this. This, this here is the is the sign bar zone. This is the Tzayn Barzal. Well, you see the different color? This is Tzayn yeah. Barzal. This okay. is the original one. The definitely, this animal, this original animal, its offspring doesn't go to the Kayan. Because this is the one that needs to go back to the Nanju. That's clear. What we're learning here is that the children are also exempt from going to the Kayan, which means when I say the children are exempt, I don't mean that it. I mean that when it has a firstborn, it's exempt from going to the Kayan. This is the way Rav Huna learns. Rav Huna learns that when it has a firstborn, which means this one doesn't need to go to the child. So where does the obligation come in? Only when this one has a child, which I don't even have on the, on the list. I if I should do this. Um, when this one has a child, I have this, this generation, this little firstborn, this is the one that's going to go. That's the way Rav Huna does it. So according to Rav Huna, There's only one generation of children which are exempt. That's this generation. But by the second generation, there's al already an up, which really the third that's, generation that's of the case. full one, but the second generation of the children, that the, it's already an obligation on, on right. its child to go to the, okay. Another so, way of saying that is when does it belong fully to the Jew? Right. 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 So already by this generation, this is fully the Jews, and then that offspring needs to go to the Kayan. Rav Yehuda says that there's two generations of children that, that are still have under the uh, authority of the non-Jew. So, so they're exempt. So right. these are exempt. <laughs> and there's be another generation here that, we're, that the obligation would, be, would start, and then the offspring of that one, which this would already be the fifth, because it would be four generations here. So the Gemara asks like this. According to Rabbi Yehuda, that the Tanakama already has two generations that are exempt. So Haina Damali Reb Shimon Ben Gamliel Afilwa the Sar Deris Pitur. That's Reb Shimon Ben Gamliel gives a number. Ten generations. Ten generations. You say two. I say even ten, but ten means forever. But that. You say two. I say ten. A little Rav Huna Damali Nachas Tanakama Ladare. According to Rav Huna, that they that. The Tanakhama didn't give a number of, gen of for the generation. They just said the offspring, which means one. 
So then you don't need to give a number. If you would just say, my afilo adasaradaris, you didn't need to say afilo adasaradaris. You could have just said, no, vladi vladis, the children's children. And automatically, children's children would have meant all the generations. See, it, it's all, it's like language here. That, that um, when you say the children's children are exempt, that would have meant forever. Unless before I was talking about the children's children. Children's children would have meant forever if I never, if I never mentioned any amount of, 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 of generations. If I'm, if I'm dealing with a number of generations, then children's children is a number for a generation. But if I'm not dealing with generations, then children's children means forever. So the, it's a Kashan Ravuna. Before we ask the Kashan Rav Yehuda, now we're asking Kashan Rav. Just on the language of Rav Shimon Ben Gamliel. Because Rav Shimon Ben Gamliel says 10 generations. Amalach Rav Huna, Rav Huna would respond to you, you would like it to say Tiyaf Tudir Rav Yehuda here. Tiyaf Tudir Rav Huna. But it doesn't, I don't know. So Rav Huna will respond, Rav Shimon Ben Gamliel Ahemet Koi. Rav Shimon Ben Gamliel is not talking about the Machlaikas between Rav Huna. And uh, it's not talking about the original case of the, Tanak, of the Tanakama, that's a Machlaikas Rav Huna and Rav Yehuda. It's talking about the case where they both agree. We are even Rav Huna agrees that they were dealing with generations, two generations. Why? Because it was Hamid. He stipulated well, Hamid, that, yeah. that he can take from an extra generation. Now, there are two generations. Okay. A Hamid Kai Denachas Ladari. Over there, we, where he pledged the extra generation to the non Jew. So then we're dealing with two generations, then that um, ten generations makes sense. Toshima. Come and listen. I'm a Kabbal saying Barzal Menevit Kichavim, Vladis Turn, Vladi Vladis Loi. It's much like us here in the, in the uh, Rishainim, if we're, we're quoting a Mishnah or we're quoting a Brisa. Over here it says that, it, that one generation is exempt, the second generation is, is obligated. So, Tiyaf to the Rav Yehuda, it's a Kashan Rav Yehuda. Rav Yehuda says that the second generation is not obligated, the third generation is obligated in Bechar. Amalach Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda responds, it means them and their children. Even though it says the third generation, you have to look at, you have to say and their children, which means an extra generation. Ikadamri, some say it differently. Hain, Vlade say and Peturin, to Yufta Duravuna. It has to be a Bryce. It can't because the mission doesn't say the word Hain. Uh, the rush speaks the sound, and it has to be a. Uh, there's a brisa that says that them and their and their and their children, them meaning, the children, and their children, are exempt. It's a kashan ravuna. Amalach ravuna. You see, it does it. It says to you after that. So amalach ravuna. Ravuna says, "Ema hein vlades pater." Doesn't we have to take out one of the votes here? When it says them. Means them, means them, the children. Or just take out the word hen. Yeah, but for some reason the Bryson has hen. 